Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to create a light sale instance on AWS. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services and it's the world's largest cloud service provider. As you can see, I'm currently on their website at aws.amazon.com. The first thing you'll want to do is to create an AWS account by clicking on the orange button on the top right of the screen. I already have an account, so I'm going to click on sign in. Once I'm signed into the console, I am going to click inside of the search field and I'm going to type in light sale. Then I'm going to select light sale. So what is light sale? A light sale instance is a virtual private server or VPS that lives in the AWS cloud. You can use your light sale instance to store your data, run code or build web-based applications or websites. And this page is where it all gets started. So click on create instance. The first thing we want to do is to select an instance location. Virginia zone A has already been selected for me by default, but I want to uh, pro see what my other options are. So I'm going to click on change AWS region and availability zone. The region defines the physical location of the AWS data center where your instance will live. AWS, as you can see, has two data centers in the East Coast. One is Virginia, the other one is Ohio. They also have one here for the West Coast in Oregon. Which region you choose has a large impact on your instance's response time. So you'll want to pick one that's local to you. So if you're hosting an app for an audience in France, you're going to want to pick Paris. If you're hosting a website for an audience in Australia, you're going to want to pick Sydney. In my case, Virginia is local to me, so I am going to pick Virginia. Then I'm going to scroll down. Then I have to uh, pick an instance image. Here I'm giving, given two platforms to choose from. One is Linux, the other one is Windows. Let's select Linux for now so that I can explain a few things. As you can see, Linux has, there's 28 blueprints to choose from uh, in Linux. One of them, for example, is WordPress. If you were to select WordPress, then your instance will have WordPress pre-installed and you will be able to run a WordPress site. If you were to choose WordPress multi-site, then WordPress multi-sites will be pre-installed. You can also choose things like Magento or cPanel. Now, you can also choose OS only. That means that you only want the operating system. If, we, if you were to choose this, you could choose from uh, operating systems, um, Linux versions such as Ubuntu, or Debian. In my case, I am going to select Microsoft Windows. As you can see, they give you uh, three options uh, for a Windows Server. One is the Windows Server 2019, one is the Windows Server 2016, and one is the Windows Server 2012. Windows Server 2012 actually has end of life uh, next year in uh, October of 2023. That means that uh, Microsoft will no longer provide updates or any support for this version of Windows. So we're not going to select this. We're going to select Windows Server 2019. Then we're going to scroll down. Then this is where you choose your plan. So they have a plan here. The lowest plan is $8 a month. It includes 512 megabytes of memory, one virtual CPU, 30 gigabytes of solid state drive, and one terabyte of bandwidth. If you were to scroll all the way to the right, their, their highest server is, um, is $240 a month. It includes 32 gigabytes of memory, eight virtual CPUs, 640 gigabytes of SSD, and seven terabytes of bandwidth. 
if you wanted something bigger than that, then you would have to start an EC2 instance. Um, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, this In this video, we are focusing on light sail instances. So I'm going to go back to these th the first three because these first three options are free for the first three months. So I'm going to select the $20 option. It's going to give me two gigabytes of memory, one virtual CPU, 60 gigabytes of SSD, and three terabytes of bandwidth. Then we scroll down and we're going to identify our instance by giving it a name. As you can see, they've already given it a pretty good name, Windows Server 2019-1. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. Uh, we're now going to add tags and now we're going to click on create instance. Great, our instance has been created as you can see, the name of the instance is Windows Server 2019-1. It does have two gigabytes of RAM, one virtual CPU. That is what the V stands for, virtual CPU. Uh, and 60 gigabytes of solid state drive. As you can also see, it's been assigned an IP address. Uh, it starts with a 54 and this uh, by default is a dynamic IP address. Um, if you want a static IP address, you have to create one and assign, assign it to it. I will be doing that in just a minute. I will show you how to do that. Um, you also have an IPv6. You also see that the, zone, that the region is Virginia and it's in zone A. Now, if I were to click on these three uh, orange, I just noticed that uh, the machine has started, it is now running. Um, if I were to click on these three orange dots on the right, I can click on manage, stop, I can reboot the machine or I can delete it. In this case, I wanna manage it, but I'm just gonna click inside of the name to open it. Now that I'm here, as you can see, you received a private IP and the public IP. The public IP is that IP, let's, let's say you were running a website on this um, instance, um, you would have to um, point your domain name. So let's say you purchased a domain at GoDaddy, you would have to point that domain through the DNS records to this public IP address in order for the domain to go to your website, right? So in, in this case, this is a dynamic IP. That means if I were to stop this server and then turn it back on, a new IP address will be generated. That's not good if you're running a website on the server because that means that you would have to return to your DNS records at GoDaddy to change um, to change the A record, which is um, where, where the website points to. So the way to solve that is to click on networking. And then here, as you can see, it says public IP, and you see that this is the a dynamic IP. Now under it, you see that it says create static IP. That means that when you create a static IP, that means that it's not going to change if you turn off the the instance and turn it back on, you'll still have the same IP address. So let's go ahead and click on create static IP. Here, it's gonna ask you to identify your static IP with the name. I like the name they've given it, so we're, go we're going to leave that and we're going to click on create. Now they've given you a new IP address. This IP address is a public static IP it's not, like I said, it's not going to change. So if you are pointing a website domain to this IP address, um, it's safe now. Okay, so now that you have the public IP attached to the server, we're going to go ahead and click on the server again. Here, uh, we are going to connect to this server using RDP, 
RDP stands for Remote Desktop Protocol, and we're going to use it to connect to the server. The server is starting now for the first time, so it will take about um, probably two minutes to start up for the first time. As you can see, the Windows has started. And now that it has started, uh, if I click on the bottom left icon, the Windows icon, you'll see that it has Windows installed. Now you can use this um, virtual um, machine to, uh, you know, to you can use it to run a mail server. You can use it as a work computer. Uh, you can use it to host websites or to do ethical hacking or any anything that you want to use it for. So now um, you're going to let's let's shut this down for now. And now I'm going to teach you two things that are very important. If you're running a website, if you plan to run a website on this. Um, on this machine. You're going to click on networking. As you can see, this is a firewall that AWS provides for this instance. As you can see, RDP is open. That's remote desktop protocol. And that's the reason why we were able to remote desktop into it. HTTP is also uh, open by default. That means that if you had a website whose URL starts with HTTP, uh, you'll be able to connect to it. Uh, SSH is another form of a remote desktop and it allows you to also uh, make a connection uh, via a, a web browser. And this is also open. Now you'll notice that HTTPS, so that's secure HTTP is missing. So let's add that because if you are um, hosting a website uh, with an SSL um, and you want people to be able to visit it, you want to have that port open. So let's go ahead and click on add rule. Here you're going to click on custom and then you're going to click on HTTPS. As you can see, it's going to open port 443, which is the standard port for HTTPS and you're going to click on create. Okay, great. So now um, if your URL, if the URL of your website starts with HTTPS, they will be able to visit it. The other thing I like to do is for RDP as well as SSH. So let's click on edit for RDP. Uh, what I like to do is restrict um, the, my, the connections to one to my home IP address. So if I'm only going to use remote desktop from my home to the server, I would enter the IP address here. Um, and that means that my computer will be the only one that's able to connect. Um, and so I suggest doing this. I'm not going to do it right now because um, I, I don't want to expose my, my home's IP address online. <laughs> but uh but otherwise, that, that's that's something that you everybody should do. Uh, the only other thing I would want to explain to you is snapshots. This is how you create a backup of your server. When you take a snapshot and restore um, your, your light sale instance with the snapshot, it's going to, re when it restores, your instance will be exactly as it was when you made this backup. Okay, so this is incredible. It's really, it's really easy. It takes just... Uh, it takes about a minute. You'll see when I try to create a snapshot right now, it won't let me. The reason it won't let me uh, is because before you're allowed to do the snapshot, you have to turn off your instance. As you can see, it's stopping right now. Once it has stopped, you're able to create the snapshot. And once it's been created, you want to turn it back on. Okay, guys. So that, uh, that was my tutorial on um, how to create a light sale instance on AWS. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I love helping people. So if I'm able to answer any of your questions, I'd be very happy to.
okay? Okay, guys, good night.